Louis Franciscetti. I'm an emergency physician at the Royal Alexander Hospital in Edmonton, Alberta. We see the trauma patients that actually survive and come to the emergency room. Unfortunately, the majority of trauma deaths due to motor vehicle collisions never make it to the emergency room. They die at the scene of the injury. And so it becomes even more apparent that prevention is the only cure for trauma. So when we're dealing with people that are dying needlessly to a cause that's totally predictable and preventable, it behooves us to try and find out the best way to do it. And we've made great progress over the years. I mean, injury rates on our roadways have gone down significantly. What we're left with now is probably the most difficult portion to work with, but we're almost there. And what we need to do now is think differently. And this kind of thinking of community engagement sort of with a different framework of being positive as opposed to being negative is, I think, what's uh, going to be required to get rid of those last deaths that are occurring on our roadways and injuries as well. The average person on the street uh, thinks these events are accidents and they'll call them accidents or they'll call them freak accidents. And there's so many of them because they're always on the front page of the paper and the leading radio and newscast that we've come to accept them as part of life when that's the furthest thing from the truth. These are injuries and these injuries should be viewed as a disease. We know what causes them, we know how to prevent them and we know how to predict them as well. So if we start viewing injuries as a disease, then all of a sudden we say to ourselves, well, it's not sort of, woe is me, you know, it was wrong place, wrong time, you know, tickets up. These things are totally predictable and totally preventable. And the day we start viewing them as disease is the day we can actually start making a difference. Our program in Niagara, if you ever go into Niagara and you see our signs, it says, think and drive. And I mean, that is an inspirational message that's out there for all the residents of Niagara. And it has reduced our uh, reportable uh, incidents by 12% since it's been instituted. In a message, there are different elements that may be carrying that message. We're talking about We're reaching into the community to solve community's problems. It's critical then when we're looking at, at workplace that we reach out across all the different occupations and industries and agencies that are vested in this issue of reducing motor vehicle incidents. Employers have to understand that if they look at their statistics, uh, for any organization that has driving, usually motor vehicle related injuries are one of their leading causes of uh, disability and death as well. So it's the employer's responsibility to get on board and make absolutely sure that they provide a safe environment but that their employees are actually driving in safe environments. And that's why they have to look beyond the borders of their organization, because they could be doing everything absolutely right, but then their drivers go out into the so-called real world. And unless the real world is thinking the exact same way, they're not gonna get the same benefits. So very important for organizations, companies, governments, you know, the healthcare system, education system, politicians, to work together and say, you know, we can emulate what Sweden and other countries have done, and we've made great strides in the last 20 years, and we now have to regroup and go after that last chunk that we have to go after. Very, very important dialogue within our community. I think it's significant that in an area that focuses on workplace safety is focusing on one of the number one risk factors, not just to their workers, but to the, the all people across this province. What is it that we're not successful by? You, you've got Clearly, to there's still. Sheet. Yeah. And make sure everyone agrees with the song sheet and everybody wants to sing. Yes, that's right. We're starting to have an understanding that it's not just people that work in transportation or for the Ministry of Transportation that have this as their responsibility, it's all of us. So. It's exciting to find out that there's a different way to try and change people's attitudes around a problem. And the problem of motor vehicle collisions is not only enormous in Ontario, but it is across the rest of the country as well. So the opportunity to come and be part of a process that will try and do things out. differently for that last little bit of progress that we need to make uh, was rather exciting. And so I was, I was fortunate to be able to participate in the session. Sometimes the tendency of us is to sort of focus on the negatives. And I think that there's a lot of positives here. We have made great strides. The trends are all going down. What we have to do now is say, well, if Sweden as a country can say, we're gonna legislate 
zero collisions on our roadways. Their belief is that no car has to crash, no car has to hit a tree, no car has to hit a pedestrian. Then if a country like that, that's been very successful, is taking that bold initiative, I think that should be a challenge to us. We decided to uh, focus on health and well-being because we felt that was a positive. The example, whatever we create here in Ontario, can be role modeled and taken across Canada and even to other parts of the world. What we're starting uh, through the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada is a pan-Canadian initiative where over the next two years we've set bold targets. We want to have 4,000 less deaths due to injury, we want to reduce injuries by 30 percent, and we want to save the healthcare system six billion dollars. And to do that we have to partner with organizations that are here today and we have to partner with organizations in other provinces and territories and that collectively we pretty well have to say enough is enough let's start saving these lives from a totally totally predictable and preventable disease make no mistake about it injuries are a disease no different than cancer or heart disease we've been able to respond to those disease aggressively now it's our turn and it's our time to say injuries are a disease and our goal is to predict prevent and reap the benefits to society. We're not going to get zero by just passing laws. So we have to take our attitudes, our messages, we have to, to, we have to learn from one another, we have to get the experience. You can't say we're going to accept, you know, X number of deaths or Y number of injuries or illnesses. You've just got to say that we have to strive as a society to eliminate it. And that you talk about this issue and make sure that people understand the impact that a good, strong health and safety plan and community knowledge and cultural change, the impact that can have to make Ontario the safest place in this wonderful country to work. This work is truly going to require a transformation, not only at personal levels, of, of starting to understand and think about our work differently, but at, at the level of, of society. And when we talk about transformation, we're talking about re-examining our, our assumptions. In this case, our assumptions about driving and safety and acceptability or unacceptability of lives lost on, on Ontario's roadways. And so it's gonna require a transformation because when we transform, we completely change the way we think about an issue. And when we do that, we completely change the culture of driving in Ontario.